Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tara. Some people call me Mama Sage. And uh, if you are new here, my business and kind of what I do on this channel is I talk about recovery and share my experience, um, you know, out there running and gunning, doing the deal. Um, we're, I've covered like a lot of stuff from whenever I was out there. And so this story is a little bit closer to like when I got clean and sober. And so we're gonna start moving into more stories about like what things have been like since since that happened. Um, hang out, see what you think. Um, if you like my videos, click subscribe, hit that notification bell down below. Also, if you wanna get updates about my new videos and um, yeah, if you've got anything to share with me, questions, comments, concerns, let me know what's up. Hit me up down below. Um, my email's down below also. You can find my socials and let's be friends. Um, for returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for coming back for another episode of Tara Was a Mess. Um, so today we're gonna talk about a uh, really bad car accident that I was in. Um, like I said, really, really close to when I got sober. And uh, this was like a pivotal moment for me in terms of like getting ready to like move into recovery. So let's get into it. Yeah. So I wanna say that this story happened about six months before I got sober. Um, maybe not even that long. I, had been up partying all night, um, most of the night anyway. I would stay up until like two o'clock in the morning and then I would sleep for a few hours and then get up for work and I had to be at work at um, seven o'clock. So I would wake up at like like six o'clock and like 6.15 and I would leave the house at like 6.45 because my job was really, really close and I didn't have to put makeup on or anything. Um, I was a prep cook at a restaurant. So I jump in my car and I'm headed to work and I'm in front of like Subway on 161 and New Horizons Learning Center, which is a charter school. And I'm going straight through the light and there's a lady who's coming the opposite way and she's gonna make a left-hand turn in front of me. So it was like she hesitated for a second and then she just went ahead and turned. and. It was a yellow light, so since I was going straight, I had the right of way. And I could tell that we were gonna collide. So I had heard that um, in accidents, people who are drunk um, survive with less injuries because they're, they're limp and, um, and more relaxed and stuff. They don't stiffen up, and so they don't sustain as bad injuries. I remember that from my driver's ed class. And so I tried to relax my body and, um, and I turned the wheel and I tried to turn away from her. So like the way that we hit, I hit her door, like I clipped her passenger side door and like the force of me hitting her made her spin around and go across six lanes of traffic back the other way, like back behind her and me, I try to turn away from her. So I'm basically turning into the same lane that she's trying to go into, but I'm trying to like avoid a flat out head on collision with her car. And so my car starts spinning to the right. And I spun around one full time and I end up like next to a pole and a fire hydrant. And she ends up back across these six lanes of traffic. So I'm gonna post some photos of what the cars look like. I know that I still have photos of what my SUV looked like. I had a 2000 Dodge Durango um, and I love that car. It was like, that was my favorite vehicle that I've ever, ever owned. And I would do just about anything to have that thing back. I loved it. Um, and then she was in like a Volvo. So her door, like her passenger side door was smashed all the way over to her center console. And my SUV, like, for real. <laughs> I mean, you guys, like, 
I was lucky to walk away. Um, I remember like after, after everything came to a screeching halt, it was like the whole accident happened in slow motion. And it was like after uh, everything came to a screeching halt, I saw there was a woman and a little boy like on the other side of the pole and the fire hydrant. And like there, she's, the mom is standing there in shock. And I, I jump out of my truck and I run over to her and I'm like, are you guys okay? Is, are you guys okay? Cause I mean, as a mother, that's like my first thought is like, is this little boy all right? I mean, he was in one of those little umbrella strollers and he was a toddler. Like he could walk, but he wasn't like, he definitely wasn't school age yet. He was probably like two. Um, and the mom is just like in shock. She's like, uh, I think he's okay. Uh, <laughs> and so um, people run out of the school and um, my SUV, the engine is on fire. So they run back into the school and get a fire extinguisher and start spraying down the engine on my car. Um, the back axle snapped on my SUV. Um, the whole side of it is torn up. Like everything is just like torn up. And um, I remember just standing there like shaking because I couldn't believe that I was alive and this lady and her little boy were alive and the lady in the other car was also still alive. Like we were all able to walk away with like pretty much no injuries. I think the lady, um, the lady who was at fault, who tried to make the left hand turn in front of me, um, she was saying that her arm hurt. I bet it did sis. Cause that was a pretty hard hit. Um, so like I had insurance, she had insurance. Um, but basically like what ended up happening was they totaled out my SUV. I think I purchased that SUV for like $2,000. Um, and then like they, so they totaled out that SUV and then they gave me like 3,400 for it. So I, paid my parents $1,500 for a truck that they had and I paid some bills and I bought some drugs and I bought some alcohol and <laughs> paid off my tab at the corner store, um, you know. And uh, I started thinking that day about like the direction that my life was really headed in. I started to think about like what was going on and like what part I had in my life. I knew that God saved me for a reason and I was trying to figure out exactly what it was. I wasn't quite sure yet, but um, I knew that I wasn't alone that day. And I knew that I was shown grace for a bigger reason than just to be able to live. Um, so I know that this is like a really, really short video, but I just wanted to explain to you guys, like one of the things that happened in my life that, um, you know, pushed me to really start to believe in a God of my understanding, um, something that, that had a really big impact on me getting sober and why I have stayed sober. So, you know, the point is to, to share with you guys a little bit of my story so that you can kind of understand what it was like for me and um, see that things are completely different now in my life. Your life does not have to be the way that it is right now. You know, I can't tell you how many days I woke up and I didn't want to be, be alive. I, I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know who I was or, you know, like what I was supposed to, what I was supposed to be doing with my life. I was completely lost. So leave me a comment down below. Take a look at my social media. You can see like kind of, you know, the life that I led before and who I am now. And if you want what I have, send me a message because I live a life today that's beyond my wildest dreams and I can help you do the same thing. So 
thanks for stopping by. And uh, I know that this was a really short episode of Tarot is a Mess, um, but I hope that it was impactful. And next week, we're going to have Jeremy here and he's going to be telling us his recovery story. Also, look out. I'm going to have some new videos coming on uh, a second channel and that's going to be like crafting and like cooking and some different things like that. So also find me on TikTok. All right, guys, have a good week and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah.